Yo, what's up guys? I am Thomas Dopaziola, whatever you want to call me. This is the Dope As Usual Podcast. I am here with my co-host, Marty O'Neill. What's up, guys? What's up? what's up? We just realized two seconds ago, this is the last episode of the year. This is it. Crazy. Ready? This is it, guys. What a year it's been, guys. It's been a really good year. Thank you guys so much for everything. Um, yeah. Last episode of the year. All right? Really odd to say, but let's get straight into it, guys. This is it. Last episode of the year, we're at episode, what, 96, 97? Mm -hmm. I can do about a little more than half a pull-up. I'm getting there. I know we said 100 <laughs> episodes, but yo, I didn't forget. Don't think I forgot. I have a great memory. <laughs> I'm getting there. I'm getting there. So um, that is being said. With that being said, season three, you know how we ended at the end of the year. Real quick update. Our first episode we shoot with our new studio is middle of January. So we're going to let this ride until episode 100. How crazy that our season two ends episode 100. It's going to be right around there. We're going to see how it goes. Probably 99, 100. Yeah. I'm not sure. But we're going to hit you guys with some epic guests the second we start. Let's we'll keep it under wraps. Yeah. Well, yeah. Got some pretty cool guests coming. Okay, guys. Yeah. New studio. New everything. New year. Everything's looking up. All right. Everything's looking up. Today, Marty and I were thinking... Yo, it's real. It's Christmas time. How are we going to get a guest in time? So we said, let's just do our own. Let's just do a Christmas. And then we realized it's the last one of the year. So this one's going to be the Christmas story episode. That's cool. right? Good. We got some great vibes going down at the studio. Today. Oh, today's today's a great day. We won't let's even go. get into it. We're just over the course of two years. We learned. Let's just let it happen before we start talking about it. All right. Let's just let it happen. Exactly. But mission accomplished, guys, in terms of what we set out for and how we had to grow the show and all that. So. Thank you again for Thank everything. you, guys. I literally said, can you believe people watch us enough that we bought these lights? Yeah. <laughs> we said that <laughs> seconds ago, like, wow, what a good run we've had. So awesome, yet yeah, it's just me and you. Oh, we have a team starting next month. Mm -hmm. Things are about to get to where people go, wow. The fan experience oh, is about to go way up around way this motherfucker. Up. I'm excited, guys. All right? <laughs> we're, we're very... Oh! What, what? Look at this. Marty <laughs> just gave me this Cypress Hill sweater. It's got joints on the arm. Let's go. Get out Shout out, out Be Real. For rocking the all the Be push tree shit. On tour. That was a trip. Tours. That was a trip. That was awesome. Shout out to Be Real for that. Um, so, guys, we're going to get straight into this right now, right away. We're going to hit it hard. Um, a couple of these I'm just going to touch on because we might have talked about them before. But we're going to go straight into it. And we've talked about it during the season. The one thing that makes story time immersive is the camera eye lock. Like you're looking, I'm talking to you. This season, since Marty's been here, we've been talking to each other. And I'm like, yo, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? It's almost like you're left out of the conversation. So I got to start turning to the camera again. Marty's going to do the same. We're trying to remind ourselves. So we're going to get into a couple stories real quick. And then we have epic News Christmas giveaway stuff. We just wanted to say thank you. I was shocked when I realized what we were giving away today. Yeah, all right. Actually, it's I wasn't today. shocked. It wasn't shocked, but more like, oh yeah, fuck you. Yeah. You're about to be happy. So stick around, okay? So this is what we're gonna do, to guys. I'm gonna get right into it. This is Christmas. We're gonna lead you from the little me and up. Marty hasn't told me any of his what he's got, so it's all it's all gonna be news to me. Here we go, guys. Let's start this off. Christmas story time. Here we go. Here we go. Guys, you guys already know, I started off my life first seven years. I was violently sick with the flu. I think we talked about this recently. Super sick with the flu. So I had, uh, I can remember my hallucinations. The one with the witch and the bear circling around my head like a cartoon. And they were screaming. And when they got closer, I heard them louder. And they would go away and then I heard them louder. Don't understand. And you guys have heard it before. I saw Santa Claus come in. I thought I was hallucinating. I think it was my grandpa drunk as hell from a Christmas party. My grandma was just beating the shit out of him with something. Tell him to get out. He's asleep. And I think my grandma was kicking my grandpa out. So you've heard that story on here. So let it travel into, yes, sick for several years, a violently, violently sick, spinning, shakes, cold, throw up, everything you can think of. Why? I don't remember my mom once. It was always my grandma Dolores taking care of me. So for this first seven years, my mom was like, oh, he's sick. 
take him. So I don't know if that's true, Mom. You're in the chat for sure. So you let so me know. You're saying just by coincidence. I don't ever remember her once. It's just always my grandma taking care of me. I was eating crackers and drinking Sprite and eating chicken noodle soup and shaking, watching Prices Right with Bob Barker. Great every days. year around mid December, you start going every down. Every single year until I can remember like the fourth grade. I didn't get sick on Chris. I wasn't like throwing up and sick while everybody's doing prep. Like I was sick. Mm -hmm. I just remember being sick. And um, brings me into the, the, the Christmases that I can remember. All right. This is a story. I'm not going to put you on blast, you dick. One of my best homies growing up. Here we go. You guys know I grew up mad poor. You guys know that. If I didn't have my grandma Grace or my grandma Dolores, well, mainly my grandma Dolores, I wouldn't have got shit really as a kid. Then again, my mom was a child skidding off drugs, trying to make it. As a single mom, so I'm not gonna put no blame on her. My dad barely got me shit. Neffel was working, so he was tweaking too, but he was working. And uh, so here it is, guys. I remember I'm in the sixth grade. I think I've told you this before. I met this kid. I walked into the sixth grade. The first day of sixth grade. You guys know this. You guys are probably sitting with the home real quick. Miami meet and greet. I met a group of four homies that had been best friends since kindergarten. Mm. All watch our shit. All in college. They all came to the meet and greet. That's awesome, bro. It was the, I'm like, so wait, you guys known each other since kid? And they're like, yeah, first grade, kindergarten, blah, blah, like, what? Do, do most people have friends like that? I don't. I don't, I, I really only go I, back to so my cool. teens with people. That'd be yeah. so cool, man. Yeah, let us know in the comments. Yeah, Is that normal? You got lifelong friends? That's so dope, dude. The lo oldest friend I have is Jeebus, and I met him the first day of ninth grade. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That's the longest, like, friendship. It's a little Preston, too, but I don't chill with a little Preston. Yeah. But anyway. I walk in. You guys know this feeling. I walk in. I go, oh, it's a nice WrestleMania shirt you got on. We're friends now. He's like, oh, so who do you like? I'm like, Stone Cold. He goes, I'm like, yeah, I like this white kid. Some like poor ass little white kid, poor ass little Mexican kid. I'm like, all right, we're going to, white men can't jump. Nope. Except, <laughs> except we both can't jump. And uh, he was mad good at basketball. This is the same kid that I said, I smoked weed with his cousin, and that was the last time we played basketball. Oh, yeah. This is the guy. Yeah, that was sad. Yeah, it was sad. <laughs> it still makes me kind of sad. Um, so here we go. Back to the story. Immersive. Back to the story. Here we go. So I am, it's Christmas time, and you know, you stop going to school like the 15th or 16th. My homie doesn't live that far from me. We're both poor. He hasn't lived that far from me, but he, I will say this. I grew up without shit. He grew up without nothing. This kid was like, I can only imagine he had like no shoes on as a kid. But his mm. mom, mad cool, tweaker, mad awesome. Not a good mom, but a nice person. Mm -hmm. You know, does that make sense? Totally. Okay. So uh he has a little sister and it's and it's him. I'm not gonna say his name, but anyway. I remember like, yo, this do you remember when Razor Scooters came out, guys? They were like you got a scooter, a Razor scooter with the soft things on the front, the handles, you could do the whole whip. You know what I mean? Like it had the back brake. You step on that brake. Ooh, my grandma Dolores got me one because she was awesome. If I, like I said, if I didn't have her, me and my sister wouldn't have had shit. So my grandma got me one. And I remember like my grandma gives me money. My other grandma gives me money for Christmas. My aunt will probably give me money. I, as a kid, you guys know I was collecting dollars, collecting change, just turning in cans, trying to, because I would like to want to buy something. I want to buy a Packers jacket. You guys remember that whole story. So I had like 110 bucks. And I remember like, ooh, these Razor scooters are like 140. And that was in like early 2000s. They were taxing for a scooter. But I knew like, yo, I can't have a Razor scooter and my homie not have a scooter. Like I got to like find a way to get him a scooter. I'm not about to ask my poor ass mom, like, can you buy my friend a present? She would have did it if she had the money. My mom was cool. But I remember I saved up all the money. It was right after Christmas break, and he didn't get shit for Christmas. I remember. I was like, fuck. And I saved up all my money. I went to the flea market, and I bought him a scooter. And it wasn't a Razor because I couldn't afford it, right? It wasn't a Razor. It was like some other brand, but it was red strips. I'm like, damn, this one's harder than mine. He's going to love it. And you remember the scooters that fold in half? You had to unlock, and they open. Razor scooters. I remember this so vividly, guys. I'm like working my ass off, trying to get more money. And my grandma Dolores is my grandma Grace. She would like, oh, dust. Here's 50 cents. I'm like, yes. Clean up the kitchen. I'll give you a dollar. I'm like, oh, hell yeah. Like, it was slave work. Like, that. who cares? I was doing it, dusting all the her little paperweights she had everywhere. Now I'm that guy with all my little beads. I was, every time I see a bead with something, I'm like, grandma Dolores. 
and I get high with it. But she just has it at paperweights. Uh, anyway, I'm cleaning all our paperweights. She gave me some change. We play gin rummy and poker. And I'm like, Grammy, you trying to bet like nickels? We'd always bet nickels. And she lost on purpose. She didn't give me like 30 cents. I'm like, oh my God. But 30 cents in your hand? All that silver? Whew. Turn into the machines when Coinstar first came out. I was crushing it. Anyway, I got like 120 bucks total. And I went and bought this full of scooter. I was so juiced. Like overly excited. I like buying shit for people more than I like getting stuff because I don't really like having hella shit. Plus, it's cool. I liked it. I like that. I like doing that. I remember I get, I went to school because I hadn't seen him all break. He went to his dad's or something. His dad was even worse, but he went to his dad's out of town. And I walked into school and I saw him and I walked up and I'm like, this is yours. And he looked at me like, are you fucking kidding me? I'm like, that's yours, fool. And like, I could see his face like, oh my God, thank you. And then he opened it up and our teacher's like, don't open that in class. I'm like, ah, eight seconds in. I go, so you can't ride it, I guess, till after school. All right. Not even done. Like two days later, I heard him talking shit about it. Because it wasn't a Razor scooter. <laughs> broke my heart, bro. <laughs> I heard fuck? it secondary through somebody else. And he was bummed because it wasn't a Razor scooter. That's the end of the story. I was so You still hurt. like friends with him? I was friends with him, but I was just like, bro. Damn. Fucking. My bad. <laughs> Shit. I never brought it up, but I felt like, damn. All right, you dickhead. Imagine a kid getting you a gift. Oh, bro. We were the same age. He's older than I am. And it was on tier with your top shit you wanted. Like, that was. Bro, I could have saved that money. I never bought a kid a gift. He was my homie, though, and I knew how poor that fool was. But I remember thinking, like, oh, I feel stupid. I never felt that, like, embarrassment of, like, oh, shit, my bad. That's the first time I experienced that, you know? Uh -huh. But, yeah, that was the story. <laughs> That's it. Can we let a joint? <laughs> Dickhead. <laughs> Ruining my whole fucking Christmas uh, hype. I was so hyped to give him that present, bro. Did you have friends that were, like, balling out of control on Christmas? I had a couple, and, yeah. Yeah, that was always disheartening. I never got bummed. I always went, oh, when I get old enough, bro, and I have kids, I can't wait to get money and buy them shit. That's why I always never want to have a kid. Like, I can't, dude. I don't want to be poor with a kid. Uh -huh. There was this one kid. I'll say his name. Fuck you. This kid named Matt. This Asian kid named Matt. He would not let you leave the conversation without letting you know what he had. Like, we went to the poor school, and this fool was hand in the pocket. Yeah, you know, my father, he bought me the new Xbox. <laughs> what the fuck? Like, <laughs> uh -huh. hmm. oh, you live in a bedroom? You have you, you share a room? Oh, that's how he was. Like, it, he always bummed me out. Like, I really hate Matt, bro. He's such a dick about it. He would always, oh, yeah, your parents, yeah. Oh, how much do they make? Like, you know where you town you live in? Uh -huh. You're like one of six fools with parents you, that you are well off. You can't be snobby. I've never he got this. He was such like... an asshole about it, dude. If you live directly next to the neighborhood, no, he lived in the good like, spot. Okay, he lived in the good still, side of town. If you go to the same Walmart or the same Target as these people that you're all being judgy against, you guys are all in the same fucking spot. It's not even that. The full fucking four foot tall, little tiny kid. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to bop him on the head. Mm -hmm. But I never got mad at kids having money. That's awesome. Like I remember, I went to my first this kid Cody. I went to his house and his dad. Like they recycle, they do this, and I walked into a school <laughs> project. I'm like, this is your room, Cody. He goes, yeah, yeah, me and my dad. I'm like, oh, what does your dad do? They had like a three bedroom house. I know a lot of people out there like, bro, what? I'm like, that's very big. You know what I mean? In yeah. a town that has nothing. Jesus <laughs> like, Christ. I just remember like certain friends like, yo, you you got one for Christmas. Like, oh my God. That's incredible. You know, I never got salty. I just, there was all, the only time I did was when those kids would be like, dude, I hate that kid. If mm -hmm. I got something sick, I'm like, oh, yeah, my grandma got me something cool. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. And I kept it under wraps. Like, yeah. I ain't going to just sit here and brag. We're all poor, bro. Mm -hmm. What if you got nothing? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's what. That's why I don't really brag about shit. Because mm -hmm. I always have that in my head of like, what if this fool's doing real bad? You don't want to. It's not as. Because I remember, for example, I had homies that were balling out of control when I was struggling out of my ass off. Like, three years ago. Mm-hmm. I never got salty. I never went, damn, for we spend money like an idiot. It's your money. Mm -hmm. I was like, good shit. One day, yeah, of course. watch. Yeah. I pulled up my Honda. My homie got his Lambo. I went, oh my God, I'm so happy right now. <laughs> I can't believe you got it. Like, by the way, my car is your wheels. 
Well, you kept like when you were doing the house vlog, you kept kind of qualifying each little different segment with that. You know what I mean? Like kind of explaining to people. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because so, cause the way I see it, it's more of like nothing's changing, bro. I just finally got some shit. I've always like, damn, I can't afford that shit. Mm -hmm. The fuck? How much money yeah. do you make? You're supposed to look at it and be like, damn, this is possible. Yes. I know this motherfucker is one of us. This yeah, that's, that's how I feel. That's fuel, yeah. That's how I feel when I see my homies. Like, that fool's my, I'm going to get there. Like, good shit. My I, whole that's thing the way is I like, think. I didn't have any examples of anybody that had ever did it Me that I knew that like how I wanted to do it. So there was Drug nobody dealers. to look at, you know, but like for us now, it's like people start seeing, you know, our whole team become successful. Like I see whatever some of my homies do. Yeah. Shit. I'm like, wow, now I'm more motivated. You know, I think that's a great circle of friends to have. Of course. Like nobody's salty and just like, Oh my God, good yeah. shit. I can't wait to get mine. That was, we were talking about this the other day. It's super, super important. And it was like a, Big section in this new David Goggins book I just listened to. Just finished up his second book. Never finished. Better than the first one. Uh, who's in your foxhole? Like, you sign up for this fight. Who's in there fighting with you? Are they fighting with you and supporting you? Or are they kind of like, or are they not? Because it takes a real specific personality type to really be with you for that long-term fight that you sign up for. And it's an energy and vibrations. If you guys can see your friends smiling, being happy for you, but you can see the smiles like, you don't look stoked toward me. You got to cut them off, bro. I know how many rappers go. I had to cut off my best friend, but like, because you came up and they got butt hurt about yeah, it. Yeah, and that and like what they don't talk about is when you do do that, like <laughs> that shit might not ever really go away. Like that might fuck with you forever. Like these are all those memes about you got to just cut people off that are you know. You not, still think about them. That might yeah. I saw Benny said like that might leave a scar. Like you might have to do it. That shit might be a giant scar that you have though. Oh yeah. Big time. It's just the certain level of person you need around you. It doesn't matter if your friend makes $5 a year. As long as your homie's on that different level that you're at. Mm -hmm. Money never mattered. I chilled with all my rich ass homies before I had a dollar. Nothing ever changed. Mm -hmm. Now it's just like, yo, oh my God, Things I got are the car you got. Yeah. You know, you're like, now I'm like, oh my God, it works. It took 11 years, but it worked. I don't know. I know we're going oh, off on a tangent. No, I'm horrible at checking in with people. I don't. I heard from one of my main homeboys, day one homeboys, the other day, and it's it's nice to just even if like you know we don't have any business together, but just to get that backup, that affirmation, that like you know me, or just that little you know like yeah you're, you're doing the right thing, you're going the right direction. A little affirmation from somebody that really knows you goes a long way. Yeah, fuck yeah, it does. It does truly. It's uh, it's good to have him around, man. It's cool. I don't, I, dude, I have this many friends, like, yeah. and like two of them I see every day yeah. or I see once a week. Man, that's why I I'm, see you more than 90% of my homies because yeah. I see you once a week. Mm -hmm. All my friends are busy and they got, I'm the only one without kids, bro. Mm -hmm. the only homie basically out here without no kids. How long do you see this going without kids? Five more years, four. Mm -hmm. Solid. I got time, bro. I got time yeah. and I'm so busy. That's when you're really kind of like, that's a good time to have kids. Yeah, do y'all be fucking 50 when they're 15 type shit? Mm -hmm. 51, 52, I'm with it. I'll be a Rogan. Oh, yeah, my kids are graduating high school. Mm -hmm. We'll still be doing the show, guys. <laughs> <laughs> we'll still be here. So I know we're getting off on, on, on the bullshit, but yeah. Um, fucking dickhead. It's not a razor. What an asshole. Um, okay. Got him that razor. <laughs> <laughs> Got it from the Mexican <laughs> flea market. I did. <laughs> the razor. Oh, I hate no. you so much. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, I'll do this next real quick story. Ready? Here we go. I am ten, maybe eleven years old. I'm ten, actually. No, eleven. Eleven. Yeah, I'm eleven. And you guys heard about my uncle John many times, right? This is the year. Right after my aunt started dating. I met my Uncle John at George Brown Gym in Merced, which is now like in Shape City. And he had big chops. Hair chops. Looked like saber tooth. And I met him. I was going into the gym because I was in football. I was going to the gym with my mom because I was a fucking fat kid. Go to the gym. I met my Aunt Pepper. She's walking with this weird, goofy-looking white guy. And he has these chops. They go, nice to meet you. He goes, oh, my name's John. I go, you look like saber tooth. He goes, Thanks. And I was like, I fuck with that guy. Thanks. 
I was like, oh, not like, who is that? Like, he was like, oh, thanks. And I'm like, oh, I fuck with you, dude. And uh, that's how I met my Uncle John, right? So we're living together on Queen Circle. That's where we have my me, my mom, my stepdad, the jail jailbird, my sister. This is the first time we had our own rooms, that, that house. The same place where my sister threw knives and tried to kill me and tried to stab me. Same house. Same house where I swanton bombed and almost broke my neck. I thought I was paralyzed. Uh, and then my mom went to work, so I stayed there for like two hours. I didn't, I didn't move. And then I started moving my legs. I thought I broke my neck. It hurt. I just felt poof, 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 and I couldn't move. And I was just tearing. That house. On a table? No, I swanton bombed off the couch onto some cushions. And the cushion, there was a <laughs> gap. And I landed on my top of my head. And I heard, oh. and I just didn't move. I felt pain and hell of heat coming off my neck. And I'm like, don't move, don't move, don't move, don't move. And I was just sitting there crying, like tearing, because mm-hmm. I couldn't move. I tried to move my arms, but it hurt my whole back. I'm like, oh my God, I broke my neck. Anyway, that house. So we're on Queen Circle just chilling, right? We're on Queen Circle. Uh, we live there. You know, like I said, my stepdad, my mom, me, Shireen, and they converted this the garage into a huge room. I didn't even know it used to be a garage. It's such a badass room. So my Aunt Pepper rents that room for my mom. And she started dating that guy, John, and he moved in. So that's my uncle. My Uncle John, you know, my aunt's boyfriend. I always called my aunt's boyfriend John because he wasn't really my uncle yet. So this brings me to the Christmas story. We have this on tape. I know we have it. I'll find it for you. I'll find the pictures or something. My Uncle John, very into video games. Super into video games. Grand Theft Auto, he's the one that showed me Grand Theft Auto. My Uncle John, I walked in, he was playing Grand Theft Auto 2. Where you're up top, looking down, and the cars drive, and you're the top view. That's what Grand Theft Auto he showed me. Oh, shit. Yeah. And then I walked in. No, no. The first one I saw was part three when you're in when you're in Liberty City. And I saw him walk, and I go, what is this game? And he goes, it's called Grand Theft Auto. I go, what do you do? He goes, whatever you want. And he pressed circle, and he punched a lady. And I screamed, <laughs> ah! And he went, what? I go, you can hear people? He goes, watch this. Got in a car. and like, shut up. I sat there. It's now my favorite game of all time still. Mm-hmm. I was 11 or 10 when he showed me. I sat with my mom. My, my aunt's boyfriend's tight as hell. And then he showed me the old one. He's like, look, this is what it used to be. But this is the first time you can actually be a guy. Because you used to be on top. He was telling me all this shit. I'm like, what? Oh, oh my God. I'm by the ocean. Get in the car. Present circle. Punching bitches everywhere. And, uh. I didn't have a PlayStation. It was his PlayStation. And I was so excited. I'm like, yo, my stepdad says he's going to give me a PlayStation. Oh, it's coming. It's coming. And then it was Christmas. My whole family's there. My grandma, my grandma, my aunts, everyone, my stepdad's family. And he's adopted. So his family is like his adopted family that raised him kind of. They're tweakers too. Oh, God. Mm. Anyway, we're all there. And we're all doing Christmas. I remember there's a couple of videos and pictures of me. My friend Eli Padowski was there, the one that my stepdad scared his dad. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, oh. And he ran off the cop. Yeah. That's the kid that was in my Christmas. He's anyway, we have the pictures. We're all doing Christmas. I get the PlayStation 2. I lose my shit. The gray. I remember the gray. I'm looking at it like open. Is that the skinny one? No, no, PlayStation 2, not three. Okay. The regular old gotcha. PS2. Oh, there was a skinny version of two. Yeah, the yellow memory card. It came with the yellow memory card. And I'm looking at it like, oh my God. They got it for me. I couldn't believe it. I'm only saying this because it's such a good memory. All right. Everything's going on. My sister's doing stuff. My my stepdad's got like a shirt. It looks like Ned Flanders. It's like the normal Christmas. And then I turn around and I see my Aunt Pepper sitting. And I'm I think we have it on tape. I'm positive. But we have the pictures. And I'm standing, I'm right here. I'm sitting opening it. And I look up at my aunt's right there. And I see my Uncle John just bend down. And he full fucking proposed to my aunt right then mm. and there. And my aunt just started crying and shit. And I'm looking like, so it's my Uncle John now. <laughs> like, all right, you're part of the family now. Hell yeah, you trying to play fucking PlayStation after this? Like, it was like those, one of those moments I remember. Like, what a movie. Did he have a lot of friends or did you just become his best friend like that? Basically? No, he only had two homies. And they both, they both died. Mm-hmm. But yeah, he only had two homies. My Uncle John was so quiet. He don't talk to nobody. But he's the loudest, funniest per- person ever. Fucking screams. He's never shuts the fuck up in the house. Yeah. As soon as we get outside, he'd even eat at our family fucking functions. He was like, no, I'll eat later. He was very like, 
oh, can I, can I get out of here? I didn't know he just wanted to go smoke fucking weed outside. I didn't know uh-huh. he smoked weed. I was a kid. <laughs> like, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. That's what he was doing. Yeah. He's like, oh, I just want to go smoke a fucking joint outside. Mm-hmm. I didn't know. And then uh, when I turned like 14, 13, no, 13 is the first time he ever smoked weed with me. I remember it. See, like, would you consider him like a heavy duty smoker? Like he was. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But when I started selling weed and smoking weed, he was like, oh, my God. You smoke a lot of weed. I'm like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I guess. Uh, then I started selling pounds. Well, he was gone when I started selling actual weight. And he got back from the army. And I remember the day he got back from the army, he walked into the the first apartment and he was like, Thomas, what the fuck? I go, Your old connect? Like that guy sucks. He used to get it from this guy, and I'm like, that fool's a bitch. I don't there's one person in life that I don't fuck with. And I don't even know him that well. Should he plug? He was my Uncle John's connect when he used to work at Papa John's. He would bring him $80 of pizza and he'd give him a quarter. So he was cool and he was an awesome guy. He had a fucking sick ass car. One of the white weed dudes in Mercedes. Wait, hold nice on. Your car. Uncle John is the original pizza weed dude? No, no. He would trade it for weed. Gotcha. He would just work at the pizza place. Uh, so when I was at Tanaya in sixth grade, my Uncle John was the guy that brought the pizza in <laughs> for lunch because every lunch they'd bring on pizza and sell them at school. Like pieces of pizza for two dollars. My uncle John would always be the guy with the pizza. Uh-huh. Like, what's up, man? See you at home. Like, it was like the fucking <laughs> yeah. inception. Like, John, I just saw you an hour ago at home. It was crazy. Yeah. You know, it was, stop. I just thought I was the coolest kid ever. Like, that's my uncle. And uh, he would sell. He would make these pizzas uh, for this fuck, this fuck in Merced, this guy. And he would. Uh, Give him John weed. My 80 sacks. That's what he always called. I got a little 80 sack. It was just a quarter of weed. But I'm saying, did he find it humorous that you then went on to become the pizza seller? For sure. He thought it was hilarious. (laughs) And he was there for that. He came back when that was. Oh, no. He he came back right when it ended. Oh, my God. What am I talking about? But when he came back from the army, he's like, Thomas, what the fuck? I'm like, (laughs) oh, that's a 30 pounds. He goes, what the fuck? Because he saw a pound. He goes, Thomas. Most we ever got was like. Mm-hmm. You know, half zip of weed he ever got oh, in his life, ever got seen. You. Gotcha. And he goes, Thomas, what the fuck? Oh, John, just things are different. It's like, you're connect? Fuck that fool. It's like, what do you mean? Like, fuck him. Like, the biggest weed dealer in town. He comes back. I'm like, that guy's a bitch. And I'm like, saying that about him. He's like, what the fuck happened in town? <laughs> I go, let me break it down for you. Uh-huh. Fuck him. Don't ever call him again. Like, <laughs> type of shit. Uh, I'll give you the quick story. It's nothing to do with Christmas. Since we did the Christmas story, and that was it, he became my uncle. Let me get into this next story real, 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 real quick. That has nothing to do with Christmas. It's a bonus story time, all right? And then we're going to get into the giveaways. Boom. You guys know. All right. His name is not John, the dealer. My name, the dealer, my from my dealers, the story time. It's got, it's one of my biggest stories. It's got a couple million views on it. People love that episode. I talked about all my weed connects growing up. Mm-hmm. And my friend Ryan, my homie that, I talk about sometimes his older brother was the man when it came to weed. He was the, the, when I, there was no one to look up to when I saw this guy, he was 19. His full hat, a uh, AMG. And like a hundred band stacked. He had a fur coat. Like he, it was like, yo, this kid's 19 years old. He's the one getting the packs. He was fucking with all the Bay area rappers. I listened to like, they fucked with him. And I'm like, this is a superstar. And then I found out he was my one of my best homies' older brother. I'm like, shut the fuck up. That's your brother? I'm like, that fool? He would come in before I started selling heavy. He would come in and give his brothers like a QP. And I'm sitting there like, one day I'm going to get like that where I can confront someone with a QP. And now it's like a QP. I smoke it. But back then I'm like, whoa, you fronted your little brother. I've never, I've never witnessed any sort of fronting on that level. <laughs> oh, bro. And the and Ethan, his smallest brother, he would front him. Uh-huh. And uh, so anyway, back to what I'm saying. He is the man. He's a white kid. I've never seen anybody freestyle that hard in my life. On top of everything, I heard him freestyle one time. I go, shut the fuck up. It's been 25 minutes. You're still going. Goofy, fun stuff. Funny, goofy shit that we're doing. I'm like, how are you coming up with words that rhyme that fast? What is happening? Like, yo, and you got the weed? You're the coolest guy I've ever seen. <laughs> ever. Ever. And he was talking about how he met on your nicotine and gave him some weed. And that's my favorite rapper growing. I'm like, shut the fuck up. You met on your nicotine. He talked to you. Like, you know, as a kid, you're like, these people are superstars. They're so far out of reach. I'm like, bro, he's in Frisco. You're like, it's just down the street. But back then, I didn't even have a car. Like, mm-hmm. how am I going to get to Frisco? 
My mom will beat the fuck out of me. Like, so, you know what I mean? I'm looking up at this fool four years old. I'm like, whoa. Damn, I'm bringing up on an ounce. Wow. It's got 100 pounds. So anyway, back to that story. Him, my dealer, let's call him. His name was John in my dealer story time. So we'll keep. It's confusing. Let's just call him my dealer. My dealer, right? The guy that disappeared. This is before he disappeared, obviously. This is when I first fucking heard of his ass. Then we became really fucking almost best homies, and then he disappeared. It's really weird thinking about that. <laughs> really odd. He's still missing, so it's like, it's fucking odd thinking about it. Um, anyway, his best friend was my Uncle John's Connect. The guy that I in town knew, like, yo, this fool's got the crazy car. He's got the fire. That's the man. And then I found out about my dealer, mm -hmm. Ryan's older brother, and went, Oh, he's the man. He's fronting my Uncle John's connect. I didn't know. Like, I didn't know that. So my Uncle John's always trading this weed to this guy. And he's cool. And then I found out my Uncle John knows my dealer. I know it's so confusing. So my dealer, Ryan's brother, my Uncle John trades pizza for this dealer that I thought was the man. Then I found out about him. Found out he's a little guy compared to him. Mm -hmm. And they're best friends. Mm -hmm. So this is where it comes down to. Let's say my dealer and his best friend, Dickhead, this is what happened. This is why my homie's fucking life started going downhill. Then he got hooked on pills real bad. We talked about it before. Then some shit happened with some piece of shit. And then he disappeared. I'm not going to go any further because I could also get shot. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to talk about some open shit. What if some shit happened? I don't know what happened, but I guarantee it's that motherfucker that did it. I already know, but I'm, what am I going to do? I don't know for sure. I'm not a cop. He's missing. It's been nine years. So no, ten. It's been a decade, actually. So anyway, um, my dealer and his best friend Dickhead, they party. They're best friends since high school. Like they're trapping together. They go to the bar. They go to the bar. I know the story's taking forever. Ready, go. Back on my actual storytelling skills. Jesus Christ. They're going to the bar, and my dealer. Loves to get fucked up at the bar. He loves doing, he fucks around with chicks, talks to girls. He's a 19 year old with fucking hella stacks. Of course he's having fun. His other homies, same same age. They trap together, they re-up together. He fronts in the sacks. Like, like on some straight up, like ace paid in full shit. Like those are brothers, like they're brothers. I remember the day it happened, bro. My dealer, they're at the bar. This is before we're really good friends, right? We became friends about six months after this happened. Real good friends. We were chilling together. And he told me what's going on. He had a house. A house fatter than anybody's parents' house. He had a house. Just him. Just him. Like a six-bedroom house in Merced. Five-bedroom house. It's ridiculous. As a kid. And he's dope as hell. Anyway, his best friend, they're at the bar. And his best friend, Dickhead, says, hey, man, I'm going to turn in. Like, I'm, I'm tired as hell. It's midnight, and my homie's like, what the hell? You're a bitch. All right, I'll stay. So my dealer is telling me this story, remember? And he's like, my dealer and dickhead friend, they're at the bar. Dickhead friend says, hey, I'm going to turn in. And he's like, bro, I'm going to stay out and drink. Fuck that. And he said, like, 15 minutes later, my dealer was like, my friend's gone. I'm going home. I'm kind of bored now. He's gone. What the fuck? Says he goes home, but he told dickhead that I'm going to stay. So dickhead's going home. I'm thinking nothing of it. It's my best friend. Why, why does he care? I'm going to stay out. He says he goes home. 15 minutes later, he's like, you know, I'm bored. Fuck this. He says he goes home. And right when he goes home, he's getting into his bedroom. And he just sees someone busting in through a side window. He says he sees like, oh, hell no. He's like, I got my fucking machine nerf. gun. Yeah, he got his Nerf gun. He's like, I got my pit. I got my shit. I'm like, oh, hell no. So I start going down. Because he says he saw someone hit the window on the side. He's like, are they trying to get into my fucking shit? So he said, I'm going down the hallway to go to my bedroom. Because he's like, I know what window they're going for. If they're going to rob me, they know where they, something's going on. He's like, fuck that. He says he creeps to his window. And right when he does, he sees someone's like hands hitting the ground because they're coming into the window. And he says, he just pop, 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 starts shooting in the air. The fool fucking just, ah, and backs out the car. I backs out the window. Starts dipping and he's like, you know what? Fuck it. So I start shooting through my door, my wall. Pow, pow. Like he's probably right there. Pow. He's like, fuck this fool. I'm like it's my house. I'm going to shoot. And he says he's popping the, the wall like because he's like, oh, it's time hit that window. Boom. He didn't want to kill the man, but he didn't want to like not shoot not at him. Shoot. So he's like, bah, bah. and that dude was 20 feet away in his room. He's like, the guy just backed up, started screaming, backing out the window, dipped. And he's like, 
so, I think he was just trying to put fear in this man. Like, oh my God, I'm dodging bullets. Yeah. My homie busts out his front door to fucking shoot the guy. Because he was like, fuck it, I'm going to pop him once. This is bullshit. Someone's going to, what if he was coming to kill me? Yeah. He's telling me this story six months later, amped up, pissed, and like sad at the world and shit. I'm like, why is this fool so amped about this story? He's like, I'm like, fuck it. You know what? I'm good. And he's like, I had him right in my lawn. And I went, you know what? I'm good. And he said, as soon as he was like, ah, I'm not going to shoot him. The guy noticed he was at the door and went, bro, 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 bro. It's me, it's me, it's me, it's me. And, he, and it was his homie. He was trying to fucking gank all his shit when he was at the bar. That's why he turned in early. Mm, Jesus Christ. He said he took it off. He's like, yo, 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 yo. And he's like, he got to his knees. He was like, bro, bro, bro. And he was like, are you fucking kidding me? He's like, I just like teared up and walked in the house. And that was it. Good God. It was, he was strapped to. The fool had a fucking gun on him. Mm, the dude that was breaking in? His best homie yeah. had a pistol on him. Bro, you don't bring that unless you're yeah. ready to use it. And you know who lives there. It's your best friend. Mm -hmm. You were there smoking blunts all day with him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, you came to rob him. And <laughs> or if something happens, pop him. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? So my homie's like, I fucking like realized what happened. And then just turned and walked to my door. And then he went, oh, fuck, I got a hundred piece here. I just shot up my house. Fuck. And then he said, he ditched a gun. He put the uh, peas in a little stash spot in his house, got on the roof and started jumping roofs of the, of the, of the spot. There's been many times where I've been in a party and I see him turn around. He jumped off the fucking second story with a duffel bag. <laughs> I've seen him do it before. I'm like, bro, chill out. It's just a party. Cause he was there to sell a sack of, or uh -huh. a pound, uh, pounds to somebody. I remember that. That's a whole nother story. Anyway, he said he was laying on motherfuckers' roofs because there were squad cars everywhere because they know who the fuck lives there. Guns going off, we're fucking finally get your ass. We're finally coming to get you. He said there was helicopters, there was hella squad cars, and he said I was laying on roofs, I was climbing in trees because I know where he's at. He's by the creeks, so it's like, bro, you were out and about like you're just escaping death. And then he ended up laying on his mom's roof until the morning, and then he went on the run for like three months, and then. Um, he got the case dropped to like misuse of a firearm. Yeah. I mean, anyway, that fool's a fucking bitch. And that guy, his, the, his homie almost died right after that fucking wrecked his car. Almost died. Like karma hit that fool. Crazy. Damn. How did he know he had a gun on him? Cause the fool had it in his fucking hand when he was running across the lawn. Oh, Jesus and then he said he was like that. The guy was running cause his car was down the road and he was like, Nah, and he said, right, he did. The guy looked and went, no, 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 no. Like, he was like, oh my God, he's about to pop me. Because he didn't notice that my homie was right out of his front door like, uh -huh. who is this? Who is this? I'm a, nah, I'm not going to pop him. Because he's shooting somebody in the back, running away. He's going to prison yeah. forever. It's uh, just murder. Just, he's just, like, you know what? No. And he said, as soon as he did, the guy like looked back. And when he did, he's like, oh, he pulled his, his little fucking ski mask off. I, I'd be so hurt, bro. It's like American Horror Story. Or not, uh, American History X. I'd be so hurt by that. Damn. I remember he told me the story. I remember everything. So that's when my Uncle John came home from the army. I went, fuck your homie. That's why. Mm. So when he came back, all that had transpired. Jesus Christ. That's why I was like, your friend's a fucking bitch. And I explained mm. what happened. He goes, oh my God. <sighs> what? Like, they were best friends, bro. Anyway, my homie got on probation for that and caught another gun charge. And they caught a fucking 100 pound case. And they caught a case with oxy. And it just all because he had priors because of that fucking night. Because the discharging a, a firearm, and he didn't want to tell him why, or he just said somebody broke in. He said somebody or? broke into my house and I was shooting at him. Uh huh. Like, why did you run away? He was like, I was scared. Uh -huh. It's three months later though. Yeah, I remember so many times I'd be sitting there before I was really friends with him. I'd be sitting there, and then they'd, his Ryan and Ethan's dad would get a call, and like, so and so, he's fucking arrested. We gotta go. I'm like. All right, smoke social over, your older brother. Mm -hmm. At it again. But yeah. he was fucking 18. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's barely older than us. He just he always seemed like he was 30. Yeah. Because like how elevated everything he was doing. But this is the same dude that was my my best homie for like a year and a half. When he was all fucked up on Oxy, I was trying to get him clean. I was trying to help him, bro. Like, well, you know the whole story. But yeah, that's the same dude. That's why I told my Uncle John, fuck your connect. Don't ever call him again. Because he never went to jail, nothing. He kept on being like a wee guy, and everyone knew, like, you're the one that tried to 
Rob so and so, right? And that was it for him. I never heard from him again. He probably moved away. Mm -hmm. Like he burned his name. His name's gone. Damn. Done. Especially with this fool is the main guy. You're fucking done. You're lucky you don't get killed. Mm -hmm. But it's his, like best, that, yeah. it's his best friend, bro. So That's how it goes. That's, that is how it goes. I just I found remember. out some super creepy shit about one of my yeah, you told best me. friends. I don't know if you should go on on that I'm one. not going to, but it yeah. just relates because it's like, fuck, man. There was only That's a couple worse. of them. God damn That's it. That's worse, bro. I'm sorry. Robbing, robbing is some financial shit. What that is is uh, death in most jails instantly. And neighborhoods. And neighborhoods. Like, oh, he's got to die now. Yeah. Yeah, we'll keep uh, it at that. You probably get what we're talking about. We'll keep it at that. But um, it sucks. Yeah, it sucks, bro. It sucks. But I remember he told me that story. What a long rant. Sorry for that story. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I just need to tell it because that's why I told my Uncle John fuck mm -hmm. off or told him to tell his connect fuck off. But yeah, my Uncle John proposed my aunt. That was that was 40 minutes ago. <laughs> Sorry, guys. So with that being said, let's have our quick commercial break sponsored by us. What's up, guys? This episode is brought to you by us. We've been fortunate enough to be asked to be speakers at TED Talk. I know that sounds insane. Marty does his thing behind the scenes. You know that. He's been doing the comedy, the music forever. You know me. I've been doing my stuff on the internet. But also, I know what I'm doing. This business thing, I got on lock. Marty's business, he's got on lock. On top of us being high-ass dudes, we also know what we're doing. So thank you to TED Talk for seeing that and seeing the entrepreneurship and seeing the, the drive that we have, the energy that we're bringing to our fans, our audience, our engagement. That's what we're bringing to TED Talk. So this theme is the money never stops, okay? This is what would you do if all of your money was gone? How are you coming back to come up again? I have never had money my whole life until recently, so I know what I know what I got to do. I've been shut down at every corner. You guys know the story. Marty, same thing. Hardships, just trials and tribulations, things shutting you down from achieving your goals, but you kept going and now we're here. That's what we're giving to the TED Talk. 307 South Broadway. That's a million dollar theater. Go buy your tickets at TED.com. Go check them out. If you guys see us at the show and you're there, say what's up. Say hi to us. We're hyped. We're hyped to see fans at the TED Talk. That's going to be badass. I know we're not like making money off tickets or anything. We just want fans to show up. We want you guys to come out there. It's going to be on YouTube for sure for everyone that can't make the event. But if you can, come out and say hi. Get ready. This is the last episode of the year from Marty and I, guys. Thank you very much. Back to the episode. Boom. Nice, look at that. Yep. God damn. Now we're back. You ready for these giveaways? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Boom, now we're back, guys. This is what me and Mari decided to do uh, for Christmas giveaways. We just we realized this episode's not going to come out on Christmas. It's going to come out after. It'd be kind of stupid to go, hey, by the way, on Instagram, we gave away a bunch of stuff. Here's the names. Like, doesn't do anything. So what we're doing now, if you are in this chat, or say it's two days later, and you're watching this video, go over right here to Instagram. You have to have Instagram to do this. Dope as usual podcast, boom, pops up. Dope as usual podcast. Look for the most recent post. The most recent post, we're going to post the second that this episode airs. So the second this episode airs on Monday, we're going to post it so you know exactly what post. We're going to do a bunch of giveaways. We have the podcast, but we also own a bunch of other shit. We do so much. So we're going to do giveaways for every single company that we have. So starting with the Dope as Usual podcast, what we're going to do, just tag a friend on the comment, in the comments. That's it. We're going to pick a name for all these prizes and you guys win. It's as simple as that. The Dope as Usual podcast. If you can, hit the follow button. That would be dope as hell. We're not doing this giveaway to like, yo, can we get 5,000 followers? Nah, if you follow, that's dope. We just want to know. that know. would put us at 100. It would put us at almost 100,000. We're about to hit 100,000 <laughs> on our 100,000, on our 100 episodes, which is awesome. Uh, but yeah, follow that shit if you want to. That'd be sick. If not, totally cool. What I'm saying is, Leave a comment. All you got to do is tag one friend in the comments. Me and Marty in three days, we'll pick a winner. So on Wednesday, we'll pick winners. This is how it's going to go. Ready? The Dope as Usual podcast. Whatever size you are, that's what you get. One of every single thing. I don't know if we can be doing some overlays. We've got one shirt, two shirts, three shirts. I think we have some sweaters in the bag mm -hmm. and shorts. All right? We got sticker packs. Whatever the value is. I don't know. One These of are about everything. to be limited edition, too. Yes, once they're gone, to, they're gone, they're gone. Season three shit is going to be insane. <laughs> Season three shit's about to be so <laughs> different level, different level of shit. So that's what we're gonna do, guys. So one of everything for the dope as usual merch, right? Yep. Like five, four shirts, sweater, shorts, sticker packs. So whatever this beanie, we'll sign some shit. We always throw in extra shit. Thank you. Imaginary, boom, bundle. bundle. I guess we could have went and got everything, but you know, overlay works. Overlay works. Yeah. overlay works. All right. So that's just one prize. And remember, if you tag a person. You might win one event. You don't know what you're winning, all right? 
we're going to ask first co- first person to respond to the DM, like, which one of these companies do you want the gift card from? Ooh. Like, so be on it. All right. So when this episode's out, go sure. right after. Go right after the Instagram. I'm not going to look at the contest, I mean, the, the giveaway until after the episode anyway. So don't think like, oh, I got to leave the episode to go on Instagram and type. You're fine. I go through every name. Don't worry. I scroll the whole way down to make sure no one's left out. This is what's going to happen. Ready? Number one giveaway. Boom. Giveaway one. Dope as usual. That's every single thing that we have to offer. Every single piece of merch we have will come to you. Thank you very much. I don't know what the monetary value is, but it's like 200, it's like 250 bucks probably. Thank you. All right. That's number one. All right. Remember, go to Instagram. I know I have to say it again. How do I enter? I'm going to get 700 comments in these comments of the YouTube. This is not a giveaway on YouTube. It's on Instagram. Just letting you know. We're announcing it now. What we're giving away, here we are. Number two, push trees. Um, I don't have many SKUs right now. I'm waiting for all my new stuff. So I'll give you $250 shopping spree, whatever you want. You want bongs, you want ashtrays, you want rigs, whatever you want. That right? goes pretty fucking far on push trees. Let's go. Yeah, it does, dude. Because we only have like eight items in stock right mm-hmm. now. We, we usually have like 30. But... You know, I, I switch printers and stuff. So whatever I have, you can have, all right? Whatever push tree shit you desire for 250 bucks, go for it. If it comes out to like 260 or whatever, don't worry, I got you, all right? Don't worry, but don't be trying to get over on me like, well, like 700, I'm like, well, it's like 250, <laughs> all right? We're small businesses, all right? Just because we make money on certain things doesn't mean every business is crushing it. We're trying, okay? Make so, sure you get that black duffel too. That thing is fucking fuego. It is, it is, yeah. it is hard. Are you out of wheat? I'm going to puff this a little joint. There's three joints oh, in there. Oh, shit. There's three more in there. Oh, yeah, I remember these things. The hash ones, yeah. So, ready? Number one, dope as usual, every single thing of merch we have. Number two, push trees, $250 gift card, credit, whatever you want, okay? Ready for number three? Number three is a brand new company that I just started with my friends. It's called the Reup Store. Reupstore.com, all right? Oh, right. Reup Store on Instagram, thereupstore.com. So what we're doing is an online head shop. We got anything from a $5 tray to a $10,000 Darby rig, cactus, elbow, glass, bullshit, whatever the hell you call those crazy expensive ass rigs all the way down to $40 bongs, all right? We want it to be a ballin' on a budget section, nickel bag, 10 sack, a dub, up to like you're buying a pound of weed. You know, you, it's something for everyone, all right? We got dabbers for five bucks. We also have a dab set for 20 or we have crazy ass bong for 200. That's our new company. But we just started. It's like week three. We're just starting. All right. We haven't even done the video. The video comes out next week to try to like let people know we have a new site. We have a, we have a new warehouse, the whole warehouse over there. So we're a small business. Okay. So uh, we're going to give like $150 credit. Anybody that for reupstore.com. But if you're not of age, I can't give you credit to a place that sells bongs. So if you're not of age, you get some Visa gift cards or something that you can go use, all right? We just don't want to leave you out like, oh, you're not 21, fuck you. No, we'll just give you something in replace that you can use, all right? So 150 bucks to the re-up store, that's number three. If you there's a sick-ass bong, it, it's now yours. So we just want to say thank you guys very much. Appreciate so that. Sick. sick. Congrats I, on that too. You got that up and running behind the scenes. It's up, it's it going. So long. But yes, it's up and going. Behind all this other shit. Another Warehouse is business. going. Shout out to Jay and Tony because yep. they're keeping it running. All right. They're keeping that shit running. They're doing all the orders. We got fucking orders. It's really cool. It's really cool, guys. We have electronic everything, grinders, everything you can think of. If you walk into a smoke shop, we got. You gonna have any sick like Bart Simpson's pieces like the Miami Ziggy's had? That'd be so <laughs> cool. They got some fucking cool pieces. So what footage. we're doing too, say a crazy ass artist has a thing for sale, we'll put it on our site. And if we get it sold, we'll just take like 5% commission or something. Come to our shop, our guarded, gated ass shop, and make the transaction in there. Mm-hmm. Take the videos, take the video, and fucking be safe when you're selling a $20,000 bong. Mm. That, that, that's what we wanted to make. Because Jay is all is the heady guy. He knows all the heady shit. So it's like, yo, Darby's coming to town. He's selling these two pieces. But like, have him do it here. He's safe here. We'll get some cool content out of it. Take some pictures of it. Oh, but I if we make the sale, saying. like, yo, we made the sale for you. We'll take our 5% commission. Come sell it here. Change the money here so you're safe. Like a broker. Like a broker. Yeah, that's what we'll do for crazy pieces. But if not, I mean, other than that, we still got, you know, our trays, our little bongs. 
we're, we're a head shop, right? That's what we're doing. It's called thereupstore.com. Reupstore on Instagram. Check that shit out. $150 credit. That's number three. Number four, guys, I talked to the dopest, all right? Yeah, I talked to the dopest, and we're like, you know what? What can we do? And I'm like, dude, just give someone a gift card, and they can get what they want. Not a set thing. Let them get what they want. So uh, the fourth and final giveaway, shout out to thedopeshop.com. It's a $500. We, do, we, do, we make more money on there than we do push trees, so we can afford to give away more money. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So 500 bucks uh, of any products you want. If you want $500 in sharks... Do it. If you want 50 pre-rolls, get them. You want some motherfucking gems? Hash house clad. Ooh. Real quick. <laughs> gems. <laughs> hash house. You guys know my friend Hash House. You know, hash rosin. Real hash rosin. The guy from the background of last week's episode. I'm coughing his ass off. Yeah. <laughs> we collabed with John, his hash company, with the dopest shop. Even though he's part owner, but he has his own company too. This is real deal. Hash house. Hash rosin. You know, squished like squished hash hash rosin that i smoke in my videos the same exact hash i smoke is inside of these edibles legally under 0.3 per weight on edibles is legal we already got it run we i guarantee you we're, we know what we're doing so yeah we really this is all legal hash rosin edibles in all 50 states hash house is legal in our edibles in all 50 states it doesn't even sound real but I promise you it is. I would not be risking my freedom without making sure I'm okay. So this dropped today on the website. With that being said, if you want $500 worth of Hash House edibles, go do it. Woo. All right? So that's what we're doing. $500 Damn. gift card. But if you're not 21, this is it. If you're not 21, I cannot give you a gift card to the Dopa Shop because I'm not risking legality shit because I want to give you free stuff. Sorry. If you're not 21 and you win the dopest shop one, we'll just give you a $500 like Visa card. Go do whatever you want. Go buy your family stuff. Whatever you want to do with it, tight. But that's it. Ready? Dopest, uh, dopest usual, first one, all gear. Every piece of gear we have is yours. Number two, push trees. 250 whatever we have in stock, that's yours. 250 gift card, boom. Number three, just started the company, so we're just new 150 on the reupstore.com. It's an online head shop, okay? Number four, the Dopa Shop, $500 or $500 gift card, whatever you want. That is the prizes. That's what we're doing for Christmas. So thank you guys very much. Really appreciate it. I know Christmas just ended. It was literally yesterday because this is going to come out on the 28th, mm -hmm. 26th. Yeah. So Christmas was yesterday. I'm sorry that you know we missed it, but we, we post on Mondays, guys, all right? And this is the last one of the year. I am hyped. Here we go. Shout out to you for remembering all that shit. Shout <laughs> it's not on the screen. Shocked, honestly. <laughs> when I was saying it. I'm like, uh -huh. yeah. You so, thank, thank you guys. guys. Thank you guys, Marty. With that being said, we're back from our commercial break. We're back from our giveaways. Remember, dope as usual podcast. We will post the post. You'll know exactly what post to comment on because we'll say this is the post to comment on. All right. Well, we're gonna talk. We'll show you. It's on Instagram. Go leave tag a friend in the comments. That's how you enter. Any of these giveaways, we're just going to pick four people. There it is. Four different accounts. Get one of each thing. If you're Done. feeling crazy, drop your favorite episode in the comments. I wouldn't mind seeing that. We should do a little flyer on the 31st. What is your favorite episode of the year? Yeah. I like that. This is great. Agreed. Or even like of the month. A little yeah. poll. I, I went to this month? I started to go make a graphic like favorite guest of season two. It's too fucking much. I There's couldn't so much. fit everybody on There's one. There's so much this year. It's crazy, actually. <laughs> We should still do it. You know how you did the Brady Bunch thing? Yeah, that's do what that. I was trying. You figure it's about 50 people. What if we do two slides? Then for sure, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So, Marty, did you have anything on the Christmas end? On my Christmas story times? That's my Christmases were pretty simple. They really were. You got to imagine, especially growing up, uh, until Jamal came in the equation, it was just me. When did you, know you guys mean? adopt him? He came, he came in when I was like uh, 11. Oh, shit. So you had by mm -hmm. yourself for that long? Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah, literally just, it was just me. It was simple. It was nothing too fucking crazy, too special. It was kind of just regular baseline shit. One, I thought of one funny Christmas memory when I first got with April. That I kept having this, I think I was telling you, I kept having this run of like, every time I tried to get her something, people would like accidentally ruin the surprise. 
No, you never told me that. Oh, yeah, it happened. Like, comically, for the first couple of years of us being together. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, like, different people, different situations and shit. But this is just, this is, like, one of my, like, goes nowhere stories. It's like a wah, wah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like... I was gonna. I was trying Ghost to. Ghost <laughs> nowhere stories. I was trying to be like, be creative and do something nice for her. And, Cause you gotta keep in mind too. Her birthday is right before Christmas. What her was birthday? Her birthday is December fourth. The child was born. Before. Oh, that's yeah. right. That's right. Jay Z's birthday too. Uh, so yeah. Uh, so I always. In that's this, why you married her. Yeah, I mean, you know, the April O'Neil, the Calabunga, all the shit. The Calabunga. Yeah. Uh, so I was always like, you know. I got to get through the birthday and then go right into Christmas. Like when I was working my day job and shit, we were already always super broke. So I was like, I planned a little trip for us to go to the outlet mall, prime outlet mall, right? Like okay. in the middle of nowhere in Pennsylvania, some shit. It, which in theory was like a good idea. So we get down there and I got us a hotel and shit. And I just remember feeling like such a piece of shit because I got us this hotel and then I took us to the mall to like for the trip. But I only had like twenty five dollars to oh, give her to fucking shop. <laughs> it wasn't enough worst. to buy anything. <laughs> that's so we, the worst. And before we left, my my dad, like, I don't even remember how he even, like, my mom must have told him or something. But, like, right before we left, he's like, oh, you guys are getting, are you going out to the mall, the outlet mall? Hit me right before we walked out the phone. It was supposed to be a surprise. Right in front of April. Right? Oh, that was, like, <laughs> that was the whole thing? Oh. Right in the hallway in my mom's house. I remember it. It was like, oh, you know. Hey. Yeah, right. so. It's wah, all right. wah, wah, wah. Shit like that. It's one of my yeah, goes nowhere stories. It's yeah. all it my dad just, ruined his prize. It was just a fucking letdown. I think it would have been maybe uh, the next year where her ma got me violently shit faced Christmas Eve. It was one of the two times her ma did that, and then we came back from their Christmas party, and I fucking puked everywhere, right? Everywhere, right next to all the Christmas presents, from just sitting on the couch, just bleh, puke Is everywhere. Everybody there. It was just April. And then she had to wrap all the Christmas presents by herself. I because you threw out. up on them? No, I puked right next to them. I missed them. I didn't hit the presents. It was right next to them. <laughs> and I fucking <laughs> passed out. And she had to wrap all presents. Oh, of God. throw up? She just shot me in the head and boxed. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine cleaning puke off of new oh, shit? Like, God. When they get it, it's going to smell like that. Puke? <laughs> well, baby Ariana puked up presents? No, oh. she's April's always better at Christmasing than I am. Like, oh yeah, Rosie, where's Rosie right now? Christmas, mm, Christmas shit. Yeah, more I kids. I fucking hate man. doing. I always give everybody a gift card and go, do what you want, uh -huh. do what you want. I gotta start planning. If I plan, then it's different. Like this year, I plan a little. Uh huh. And I plan like presents and shit. Yeah, I tried to do that this year, and fucking a certain band that we're fond of kind of screwed me over with their. Goddamn merch. Fucking broccoli. <laughs> broccoli metal band. <laughs> Fucking corn. Corn uh, website. Get it together. We love you, corn, but your website eats dick. Marty ordered it and then they canceled it without telling them they canceled everything. They didn't even. They just they're just <sighs> refusing to ship the shit. They're like, we'll give you your money back. Bitch, give me the order. It's been two months. I want my shit, man. It's been two months? In my mind it has. Oh yeah, band merch. Band merch takes a while though. Yeah. But come on, corn, we love you. Got me scrambling before. Marty was all prepared. And now you made him look like he was not. But it's okay. We're going to fight through it. Um, I got mad gas cards for everyone. It's a good idea. My sister's a dick. She doesn't really like presents. And what am I going to get her? Like, well, here, dick, you can't say, oh, yeah, thanks. She doesn't like getting shit. So I'm like, stop being a bitch and take it. Like, genuinely? She's just like, or she just doesn't feel comfortable, like uh, it's not comfortable. She's just like, eh, thanks. I don't really, like. I don't really want those usually. Not in that <laughs> term. It's more of like, you don't have to be the Grinch at the beginning of the movie all the time, bitch. Mm -hmm. Be the Grinch toward like you know gotcha. three fourths in, where uh -huh. you're like kind of nice and getting that like, oh, all these <laughs> yeah, people I like me. Uh -huh. These people like all oh, my family likes me. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna go smoke a bowl in the garage. My mom's uh -huh. house. Get out of this conversation. Yeah. Like, just trying to be nice, bitch. We got our gas cards. It's got our mad money on gas card. I'm like, here, don't pay for gas all year. 
Nice. You know what I mean? I try to buy her a fucking car and she wouldn't even let me do it. Bitch. Damn. She spent all her fucking money she had on buying a new car. I'm like, I would have fucking bought it. What'd she get? Like a RAV4 or some shit. I don't know what it's called. It's like a SUV. Mm-hmm. <sighs> When's it made back? When's it made back coming in? It's sitting at the port. They said, we'll let you know when we release it. We're fucking doing donuts and shit. <laughs> Bro, it's on, a, it's on a ship. It's in a cargo a cargo box. The, the car's been here for over a week and a half. In LA? It's at the port. It's sitting. And the guy's like, I know you feel bad, but I got 15 Lambos on that port waiting. All sold. Just, they said, oh, January 15th, we'll give you a call. They've been there since December like 8th. <laughs> What the fuck? The port, they, they're their own fucking oh. judge and jury and sheriff, bro. They don't give a fuck. Like, mm. Oh, yeah, it's in the middle of that boat. Oh, we'll get you in a few weeks. You know how many boxes there are there? Hundreds of them. And you have to crane them out. What if it's the lowest one? Oh. It's like trying to get the soda out at the grocery store. Like, I want the ruby red squirt. <laughs> and it's on. there's 15 Pepsis on it. Well, let me fuck everyone else's day up and move this and it falls over. That's what they're not going to do for me. So, like, no, we'll get you that. 11 days. Gotcha. Oh. Does I'm c- just not even excited. I'm just trying to like. Does it come right to you or does it have to go to a dealership? Or it, goes to their, it goes to the dealership. Then I'm going to go pick it up. Mm. Yeah. It should have zero miles on it. Whoa. You know, it hasn't been driven yet. Yeah. Zero so, miles. Yeah. It's got plastic. It's like pl- completely wrapped still. So I'm going to unwrap it. Wow. I mean, I, I'm going to tell John, like, don't let them unwrap it. I want to do it. Like, I want to rip the plastic off of everything. I still have all the plastic in Rosie's car. Oh, no. I forget to take it off. Every time I look, go, God, I can take that shit off. <laughs> so all the shit in the back, all the blue oh, strips. No shit. Yeah. yeah, I keep forgetting to take them off. I'm like, fuck it, it protects it. Is John getting some new shit too? He's always getting new shit. When he's, uh, we'll be able to have him on the show when he feels more comfortable. Uh-huh. The reason we don't have John on the show yet, you know what, let's not even talk about it. John will be on the show when he's ready to be on the show. Mm-hmm. And oh, then yeah. when he is, he'll be able to talk about everything. It's going to be fucking outside. that light. I threw it. Trying to talk shit about my sister. Thank you. Oh, yeah, John. It's going to be epic. Um, so, yeah, I'm just waiting on the car. Just waiting. But anyway, yeah, I was just a woman buy her car. Dick. I bought her some fucking Gucci shoes that look just like the van she only wears. And she goes, oh, fuck yeah. Uh, I'll wear them when nobody <laughs> knows what they are. And I go, you're going to wear them when nobody knows what the Gucci symbol is? You fucking bitch. That's in 100 years. So maybe she's like, I'm never going to wear these Gucci shoes. I'm like, bitch, I was just trying to do some bougie shit because you don't like bougie shit. I thought it'd be cool. You fuck. Through your flat van slip-ons, but the <laughs> yeah. Gucci print look cool. They look cool. I could have got you vans, but I mean, you have vans. Uh-huh. Just trying to be nice. Something special. She's like, yeah, I don't think she's, I don't think she's taking them out of the box yet. Damn. She's just not down with any of, the, any of that, I guess. I don't give a fuck. I'm just saying like, <laughs> she's not pulling a wool. It's not a razor. She's at least she didn't do that. Yeah. She's like, oh, it's uh-huh. designer. Damn, bro, I wear fucking vans. That's yeah. the kind of look she gave me. I was like, I know you wear vans, bitch. So do I. Uh huh. This shit is what? still cool though. Still cool, dick. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't remember what we're talking about. Man, fuck. John gave me a whole fucking class. He gave me a consultation on luxury cars and shit. And- experiences that shit was invaluable the like Porsche says the best one yeah out of all these cars he's like he's like I'm one with the Lambo when I'm driving the Lambo I am the Lambo but the Porsche is a driver's car yeah Damn. you just do this <laughs> you better be on your shit in that Lambo like you 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 can't not oh what's up bro yeah like no you can't <laughs> do anything else. you can't even smoke a joint in that car you cannot do anything but fight for your life in that car which is why I don't like it it's too scary. I drove it, drove it, drove it once, and I hate it. It's so Remember much that responsibility. Time you damn near bust your kneecap open on oh, the Tesla. No, I thought it was on the blue Lambo. No, that was the Tesla. Oh. I hit the screen. The screen went into the dip of my knee where there's no bone. That the is side, right. yeah, and yeah. I felt like it popped it out of place. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh man! I did it in the Lambo too. I when the I, Lambo, the the fucking camera almost hit me in the fucking mouth. I yeah. was recording it almost popped me. That shit takes off so violently. I don't, that shit's too much responsibility. It's way too much responsibility. Uh-huh. I can't believe we're talking about cars and shit over here. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. It's like unrelatable ass shit, but it's fun. If you're a car guy, it's relatable as hell. I just think it's cool. Anybody who wants nice shit. I think it's cool. Yeah, it's fucking, it's fucking awesome. awesome. I was taking pictures of it and shit. Yeah, it's not like 
yo, I got 17 Rolexes. And, uh, <laughs> it's more like, oh, my God, I like that watch a lot. This is the shit we wanted when we were on the fucking porch. Right? Exactly. When I was sitting in the house, I never <laughs> wanted jewelry, but I was just like, yo. When I was delivering pizza, and I saw that white Mercedes for sale. I went, oh, my God. He wants 10 bands for an $8,000 car. Fuck him. And I didn't buy it. And he was smoking a cigarette when I walked up, and he was smoking a cigarette in it. Mm. It was his daily driver, but he was selling it. I was like, ah, bad advice about this car. I'm going to get out of here. Mm-hmm. But I remember I drove away like one day. I'm going to have that fucking bitch. Mm-hmm. And it was the old, it was the, the 50 cent one. Yeah. It was the 50 cent one. And it had, it didn't, wasn't convertible though. But it was that model. And I remember I saw it like 50 cent. Hell yeah. I'm going <laughs> to get that car one day. Fucking hype, dude. It's just fun stuff. Cool stuff. Motivational things. Yeah. For myself too. I Every time some dope shit happens, I go, damn, fool. Mm, me you know? too. Because the person that used to do that shit heavy was Michael John. Like every time something happened, he'd call me, bro, what the fuck? Like when we call each other, like, yeah. bro, mm-hmm. he would call me like that. So it's That's like, awesome. fuck, it's weird. So we're just actually happy for cool things. Like oh, yeah. Life. That fool so stoked. It's crazy because he's like the guy behind the camera. You never see his ass. Yeah. And everybody knows everything about him. Uh huh. And he was like, damn, well, fucker, that's crazy. People, you're talking about the time. Like, yeah, you smoked crack. <laughs> you know, like, everybody like, knows. About it. Everyone knows you smoked crack with me. <laughs> you got me to smoke crack, you asshole. <laughs> oh, shit. Um, where are we at? <coughs> damn. <coughs> 106. Good timing. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Yeah. Here oh, we go. and shout out for last week's episode. All the support on that oh, fucking Falcon episode, too, by the way. Well, thank you for saying that. I'm going to say, I want to say some shit. Watching that kid talk how his brain just said it was amazing. Mm-hmm. And I don't mean kid because he's younger. I mean, I say everybody kid. I do that shit all the time. And watching him just do it freely, I was like, I fuck with this dude so much more than I thought I was going Coming to. Coming on a show like this with like older dudes, or, you know, he wasn't timid to be him at all. No, he was chill. I'm just saying like, he stood up and just froze. Yes. I do that shit to Rosie in the house <laughs> in the most awkward position and shit that I'm doing uh-huh. while I'm mid chop <laughs> yeah. chopping vegetable. <laughs> but I'll just sit there until she's like, dude. All right. All right. Yeah. Sometimes it'll be like a minute. Uh-huh. And I'll stop. I'm like when he's frozen, I go, bro, I do that to Rosie constantly. I fuck with love this dude. Because I'm like, yo, you're a weirdo too. I do stupid shit just like that. It's made me like. Mm-hmm. I fucking like this guy. You know what I mean? It just I don't know. So shout out to Fulcrum. All right. Shout out to everybody out there. Um, the positivity. And real quick, we've had Steve O on here. We've had Dr. Drew. We've had major names on this show that pull audiences and all that stuff. Great. I just want to let everybody know. This past month, we've had nothing but YouTubers. All of you guys are pulling more people than these famous household names. And I'm not putting down anybody, Steve O's or anything. I'm just saying, like, look at that. Like Idol. Steve O's a fucking celebrity. He's the man. And you guys are pulling these numbers, maybe even slightly higher. That's a fan base. You know what I'm saying? Like, look at your fan base. When I go on other people's shows and something like me is like, damn, do you got a lot of people in these comments? Hi, to me. That's the fan base, bro. People, we connect with them because they're us and we are them. So when I say like, Goblin's been here, Eric Khan's been here, Duno's been here, Fulcrum's been here, in a row, watching their fans fluctuate and come to our shit, and not fluctuate, watching their fans flock to that episode and go, yo, good shit. It's so dope to see. So that's why I want everybody out there to look. Content creators are the new step in the door. Does that, does that make sense? Like it's a new Bo Burnham is a, a hilarious comedian, respected comedian. Like other comedians look at him like, oh, he's a stand-up. That fool started off on Vine. I remember him making stupid ass little six second clips. He made them and realized, oh, people laugh. I have a following. Let me cr- hone the craft of comedy. Look what he's doing. All right. We doing the we shit. I never talked on camera. I didn't know how to talk on camera. I tried story. started honing in on story time. Now we talk for a fucking living. This is what we do. It just takes time and knowing like, oh, I really liked that. I never once went, I can get paid off talking. Never. I went, I like this a lot. And then people were like, you're good at this. You captivate me stories. I'm like, really? And I watch, I'll find, I'll watch back the editing. I used to edit myself before I met you. I'm like, yo, 
that was pretty fucking funny. Like I'm I'm involved in the story and I told this bitch, wow, okay, I can see how people like this. And then you get more like, yeah, I like doing it. it's like when a basketball player realizes he's like good at basketball. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know what I mean? I'm like, wow, you of course, know, this oh, is I fun. Can, I, I can love talk. This. I can fu- this is fun, and yeah. people love it. This is what I'm doing. You can just tell. Yeah, so that's why I want to. When you brought the fulcrum, like, look, content creation. He's doing his thing, building up his following. Eric Goblin, Duda, all these dudes are doing their thing. You can do it too, is what I'm trying to sell you. Uh, I, Faze is from Faze Reigns from mm-hmm. fucking Canada. DDG was from where? Flint, motherfucking Michigan. Michigan. All right, not Flint, Pontiac, Pontiac, Michigan. Guys, he's got albums on the, on the top number, number on the top ten right now. Some of those songs were charting so high. He started off as a content creator, realized he liked doing rap, likes making music. Look what he's doing. Still makes content creation because that's his foundation. But this music is where he's trying to elevate. I make content; it's my foundation. I love it. We're making this podcast because this is what I want to do. There's so many things you could possibly do in Fulcrum's like music. Like, oh, I like content creation. Let me let my content creation come up and my music will come up too. Mm. Eric, I don't know what Eric went. He, I don't know what like his other hobbies are, but Goblin, I don't know either. But look what they're doing with their fan base. They're building their fan base up to monetize essentially off of what they do. Different business endeavors that you get into. And we're all in the same space, but there's room for everyone. I don't like that shit when people are like, oh, nah, I ain't trying to fuck with that fool. What if he gets bigger than me? Like, That's not how it goes. Not how it works. Yeah. Doesn't work that way. Someone's always going to be better. It's always going to happen. Who gives a shit as long as you're happy? Mm-hmm. Right now, do you like Tupac? Yeah. I love Tupac. Does that mean you're not going to listen to another rapper because you love Tupac? Mm-hmm. It's just oh. like how J- J- Ro- like Rogan did it. And then like Joe Brought Diaz, his guys up. Don't control so all pop stuff. Different you love genre. all their shows. You love them all. But they all could come together too and be strong yeah. as shit. And they're all strong on their own. Just like all the YouTuber dudes. Like, I do my thing. They do their thing. If we all come together, it's fun. It's dope. I don't know. I, that's the way I see it. So, yeah, thank you for bringing that up. So, that seeing that fool just do mm-hmm. stupid shit. I'm like, dude, I do stupid shit like that. Love this guy. And we got tons of comments about the ice and the piss trough. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it is Oakland A's. I was right. Well, yeah, but... The, it's to uh, splashback. Wash oh, splashback. Someone said it stops with splashback too. Oh, okay. What'd you read? That the piss is melting the ice, so it's kind of washing the down the drain with the piss. So it's water and piss being drained down. I the drain. guess <laughs> the smell. A lot of comments on it though. <laughs> and I saw. I read a lot of comments. Um, <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. Go Bills! By the way, throwing fucking go Bills! By the way, <laughs> just throwing that one out there. Oh my god. Let's go. Um <laughs> good shit. Good shit. All right. Um, this is the last episode of the year. Mm-hmm. And this is the first time on earth we're gonna hit hour and a half. Yep. When it's, we it's say a must we are. today. Yeah. It will happen mm-hmm. today. All right. Let me end you off with this little piece. Story. When I started dating Rosie, I was just stopping the weed. No, 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 no. I was still selling weed. I stopped selling weed when Instagram started taking off a little bit. Sorry. The weed was slowing down so violently bad. I remember there was one day I looked at my cabinet. I had like six pounds of the purpliest, perfect form packs. Every nug, two grams. Every nug was a picture magazine. I had sour diesel, pristine pack. I had a lamb's bread Perfect. I had like six pounds of all these fucking strains. I couldn't get rid of a, a sack. Couldn't get rid of a 10 sack. Like, I had these people on my phone. And then they slowly, like, stopped selling. I, I sold a weed to a lot of people that sold weed. Like, this full, full sells a pound. This full sells cues. This full breaks down ounces. This full, all right, here, 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 here. To me, I don't give a shit. Like, yo, you four zips? I, all right, I'll do that four more times. That's a pound. Perfect. Don't care if you only bought a cube, bro. I'm breaking it down anyway. And I had fire. Oh, one was a cherry pie pack. I remember looking at it like, oh, my God. And I can't get rid of this. And there was a time I was so broke. Because you got to remember, if no one's buying the weed and I'm smoking weed, I'm not making anything. There was a point where it was like a month and a half, I wasn't getting rid of shit. There was a time, I remember the time I text a few people like, yo, let me know when you need something. And I went, I'm playing offense here. God damn. Yeah. I was like, dude, am I asking 
people to buy weed. That's interesting. I just felt like this is not the way to do it. And I hate this. Me and Rosie started dating, right? Me and Rosie started dating, and I remember I was so... I went from having constant money to just being so... It was the only time that I had that I wasn't selling a lot of weed. For like the for like six months straight, there was no... Like, shit was bad. I don't know how it happened, but it went back to normal. Anyway, me and Rosie started dating, and I remember I had eight... Like, almost $19 in cash besides, like, eight pounds of weed. Damn. I remember that. I remember, like... I got like 20 bucks. Are you fucking shitting me? I was down. I never saved money. I was a fucking idiot. I had no money. Anyway, I had like 19 bucks in my pocket, I remember. And I was just started dating Rosie. I'm like, yo, let's get food. And that's back before I started eating healthy shit. Get food. Make $6 can get you all the food in the world when you go to KFC and McDonald's and all that. Like, that's enough for two people to eat. So I remember we go to KFC. I'm like, all right, cool. Just like you did at the fucking outlet mall, $25. I was pulling a half-baked, $6. Spare some change? <laughs> Thank you. Remember? We fucking stealing on the, uh, eating the hot dog? Let's walk. Like, can we get a cab? That's how I felt like, I have no motherfucking, Rosie has a job. She has money, but I'm not about to ask Rosie, can you pay for oh, this? Oh, the worst. Fuck no, I'm doing that shit. I asked you. So we're going to her apartment. I'm leaving my house, going to her apartment. We go in the KFC parking lot. I mean, the drive-thru. And our shit comes out to like $11. And on my head, I'm like, ooh, damn. Okay, okay. And then she gets a text like, oh, can we get Monica something? I'm like, yeah, of course. Her roommate. And it was 1840-something. I remember I went, oh, my God. I have 19. Thank God. And I went, thank you. And I got it. And we get back to the house, and they forgot one of my things. I was like, I'm so poor and you forgot one of my, oh my God. <sighs> and if I was at the end of this day, I'd be the richest guy in the world with all that weed. Nobody wanted the weed for some reason. I could not get rid of it. Everybody was buying mid packs, outdoor packs. It was just, it went bad. It went bad. That sucked a lot. So that first year I was with Rosie, that led into Christmas is why I brought that up. I tell backstory so fucking much. I'm sorry. Leads me into the Christmas story. First Christmas with Rosie, Christmas with Rosie, first Christmas with Rosie, damn, I couldn't even speak, was so scary. I was like, yo, it's the first time in my life I'm not balling out of control after 18. Like, I had to do whatever you want. Like, I got money. What am I doing? I'm selling weed. Work at the business, but I got too much money right here. <laughs> I had so much money all the time. Like, doesn't matter. I got money. Let's go do it. And then it went to, oh, you're broke. And John had just went missing. My dealer, my oh yeah, sorry, I'm not calling John anymore. My dealer had just went missing two and a half months into me and Rosie dating. So as soon as I couldn't get rid of weed, I had no more connect. Mm. I remember how hard it was with no with not being able to get rid of weed, but I remember I had weed. What happened to all the people that were normally buying from you? They just fell off or they found a different place? Well, or? they found different people that were cheaper, bro. My shit was such top shelf fire pack. It, they called them triple A packs. They were AAA packs from Humboldt County and Santa uh, Humboldt County because my dealer was getting them. He would go up there and get like 60 packs, 80 pack, and bring them back, give me 10 or 20. And then I'd go get rid of my shit. And come, I mean, I was fucking killing it for a while. And then he went missing. And then I really was fucked. And this is like October. Oh, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. Six months later, it's the it's the year, me and Rosie, sorry. Me and Rosie started dating in November. It's the year, the next year. He went missing in like mid-month, mid of the, middle of the year, middle of the year. Me and Rosie's anniversary is in November, and that Christmas, remember I was like, after six months, it was, I was broke. Mm -hmm. That six months led right into Christmas. And this is the reason why I'm bringing the story up. Sorry, timelines, I'm trying to make sure I'm right on point so it makes sense in my head. The years are hard to remember, fuck, like which year it was. I remember what happened when it happened. He went missing, and I and that's when I met Stinky Dan that blocked all my punches. Mm. That's why I met Stinky Dan, because my dealer went missing. If you watch my dealer's story time, it leads right into that. That's how that happened. Excuse me. I had no money at all, and it was Christmas, guys. And I remember, have you ever, like, looked around at, like, you're at Walgreens getting, like, some drink and go, I think I can make Christmas work in this aisle. Oh, this Walmart. Oh, Walgreens knows what they're doing. <laughs> yes. Walgreens has things for this kid, and they got something I can get for my grandma for $8. Yeah. 
and there's a twelve dollar thing over there for another kid. I think I can make it work here. That's fucking true. Yeah. So I was in Walgreens like, what am I gonna do for Rosie? I don't know what to do. Me and Rosie don't buy each other Christmas presents ever. We've n- I don't think we ever really have. Really? Even today, I don't. I can get shit for Rosie. She don't get shit for me. We don't really get anything for each other. We just want to hang out. Mm-hmm. If I can not be bugged and hang out with Rosie, f- f- we're winning. And uh, even when we were poor, we never got shit for each other because we always got shit for everyone else. We didn't have no money left over. Mm-hmm. Like That's the fucking way it worked. But this year, I mean, we're not broke this year. It's just, dude, we, she got a new car. I'm going to get a car. When she wants shoes, she buys shoes. And if I want a new shirt, I'll buy a shirt. So I don't really want fucking anything. Mm-hmm. It's neither does she. Like, what can you give me for Christmas, Rosie? Give me 50, 60 pounds fucking more better in shape. No? All right, give me some vitamin store. That's what I told my whole family. Get me vitamin shop gift card. If you really want to give me something for Christmas, give me a fucking gift card to vitamin shop. Because mm-hmm. that's all I'm going to be doing next year is trying to get fucking in shape. Mm-hmm. I don't want anything. I already bought clothes. Those clothes barely fit. Let me make them fit better. Just give me vitamin shop shit. That and the trainer. That's all I want to do. It, yeah. yeah, so the, that, that, I remember that first year, I'm going through Walgreens like, what am I going to do? And then Rosie tells me, like, I don't really want shit. And I'm like, oh, my God. Thank fucking God. If we buy something for each other, we, it was always, like, mid-January. Mm-hmm. When we, like, re-upped our money somehow and got to. Rosie's such a fucking down-ass fool. She never once complained about being poor. Ever. Not one time. It was. It's kind of odd thinking about it. Like, we were broke as fuck for, like, nine years straight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Us, too. Yeah. Yeah. And she yeah. never once Thing. We watched Sex in the City during quarantine, and that's the only reason we ever bought our first pair of designer shoes. I went and bought them for. Them. I'm like, "Yo, these bitches are talking about crazy shit," and I'm like, I'm, "It really matters." Girls, like, "Oh, that's something, something from this collection." Go, "Oh, that's cool. It's like loading the cars." I'm like, "Damn, it's a '66 cow. Oh, good shit." Girls, see shit. Like, that's the fucking what the hell? That's a this 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 designer this year this model 1960. Like, damn, you motherfuckers know. And Rosie knows all of that shit. Mm-hmm. As a kid, her her. Her, that's what she did. Look at magazines. She was a little girl, like a girly girl. So she's like, dude, I'd never be able to afford this shit. It's just cool to look. Look at that. Look at that purse. Mm-hmm. And now she's got them. So it's cool. But she never once went, oh, let's save up. Can I get a purse? Like, motherfucker, we're poor. Never once ever did Rosie ever act weird. Mm-hmm. And she's, all, yeah, she's fucking awesome. So that first Christmas was bad, bro. I didn't get her shit. First Christmas, we didn't get each other anything. It's just weird. I like, can't remember, but I'm pretty sure same fucking boat because I quit my job as soon as me and April got together. So I then became too. broke as fuck for me about too. a year until we were about to have a kid. It was all bad, dude. I swear it was all bad. And that brings me up to the last part of this. Last Christmas, I finally had $10,000 legally like saved in my bank account. And I spent five bands on Christmas. Mm. And I remember I looked at Rosie and like, you know, we spent half the money we have on Christmas. But... We usually like, oh, we had 600 bucks. We have 12 people we had to get for. How can we make it work? And now it's like, you know, we got 12 people we get for. How much did we spend at the end? Like, we don't give a fuck. We, now that we have, if I have like $800 and I need to spend $600 on people, I'm going to do it. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, mm-hmm. I got it covered. Fine, it's fine. I got you guys. But I won't go buy it. Now I'm getting better. I'm like, I'll go buy. I, yesterday I bought glasses for a moment. I want these glasses. I didn't, I didn't do it like, we're going to do content and do this. And I just mm-hmm. went, I like these glasses. I'm you know what I mean? Like, I know I got buy all that bullshit in the closet, but most of it's more like, oh, take a picture. It looks sick. It takes photos in it, blah, blah, blah. And it's just, it's just weird buying yourself shit. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, so we had 10 bands and we spent five. And then this year we went crazy as hell. Fuck it. I'm just really excited. I'm fucking hyped as hell to finally be able to do shit and not go, how much money's left? Like, I know you probably, a lot of you relate to this. My whole life into, in with Rosie, counting the groceries, like, that's $6. Counting up your whole grocery cart, like, okay, that's 96, that's like 98 bucks, but ta- I, I got 100 bucks. All right, fuck, put this back, put this back, put this back. Fuck. Can't make that shit. Okay, let's put this all this part back. Let's think of more. Like, I, I hate that feeling. Like, yeah, my mom did that shit. Time. Every time I would, my mom would be pushing a cart, and I'd be counting shit. I remember I was like five, just like, oh, fuck. That's not enough. We don't have enough money. Fuck. And my mom, I just wonder why she was sending me the car. She was using food stamps. She was embarrassed and shit. She'd always make me sit in the car. First off, you're sending me to the car, I'm going to get robbed. I'm fucking six. My sister's seven. But she was embarrassed of using food stamps and shit, but I remember I'd be counting like, we don't got no money. This sucks. And it's the first time in my life where I went and got presents for people. I'm like, I don't care. I don't care. I'm just, Fuck yeah. Good shit. It's just a different feeling this year. It's very like, 
awesome. And you guys got your fucking house done, essentially. So next year is going to be your fucking a horse unwrapping a horse for Emory and shit. <laughs> a unicorn. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you guys are, and that's me and Rosie next year. is like, oh, we're not getting a bunch of presents. We just got a house. Mm -hmm. That's us. We're going to flip yeah. next year. We're like, no, we're buying a house, motherfucker. You a dick. I'll give you a gift card. You know what I mean? This year, I'm like, yo, this is the last year we're going to be able to do it with a couple years left of no kids. We don't have a house yet. We can do this this year and like buy shit for people that we want to get. So that's that's the end of the Christmas part. You guys are crushing it. It's crazy to watch. I'm excited. Thank you, sir. For real. stoked. Shit as well. And we just moved. The house tour just came out two days ago. I'm moving away. I'm done. I'm moving out of the spot. We just finished the video. The day you sent me the video, like, <laughs> the video's done. I go, I'm moving. I just said, told the building I'm out. Oof. But it's okay. I'm fucking moving, guys. I'm over this place. Spent too much money for shit not to work. So the penthouse that I really like, American Psycho, done. I'll be out next month. But I found Back a work. stupid house. An actual house. And it's unbelievably fat for cheaper. Oh now. shit, I didn't realize that. Nice. I'm not gonna say prices wise, but it's it's Less. a pound, a fire pound cheaper. A month. Okay. All right. <laughs> so bracing on where you live, you can stitch <laughs> on how much that is. But as a pound of really good California weed that I would buy right now, it's a pound of weed cheaper mm. for a house with a pool and a yard and a, and a garage. And a, it's a house? It's a house, four bedroom house. For, wow. For a pound cheaper than my apartment. Burbank and Glendale's too expensive. Mm -hmm. It's overpriced. Yeah. I'm getting the fuck out of here. Mm -hmm. Fuck that shit. Plus, I, I, I park in a parking garage in my apartment and I have that new Walk car. The fuck up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I have to. Oh, from my apartment, you get the elevator, go to the lobby, walk 40, 50 yards, 80 yards. That's not 20 yards. <laughs> elevator again, walk another 80, 100 yards to mm. my car in space. Mm -hmm. And if I'm pulling that car in there, I'm going to be real pissed coming out and someone's parked in my spot or mm -hmm. someone opened their door into my shit. Like, I can't do it no more. I can't. I got to get a house. Yeah. I, I, I'm over it. I wasn't planning on it, but I didn't have 50 days of no AC. 50 out of the first 70 days mm -hmm. I lived there, there was no AC during the heat wave. They comped me some rent or whatever. I don't care. I just want the heat. Then the first two weeks of December, there's no heat. And then for a week, my water didn't get hot. Mm. And then my washer didn't work for five days. Bro, come on. Too I'm the first shit. tenant in the whole building. So it's like, you should have been prepared for me. Sorry. Um, That's the, the Christmas thing. I wanted to end it with, we start me and Rosie. The first Christmas ever was so bad. And now we're finally, like 10 years later, finally doing good enough to like, yo, just whatever they want, whatever we can do, just get it for. I'm stoked. Uh, my mom's going to see this after, but I, my mom, I got her fucking a trip wherever you want to go. No oh, shit. Like you and your boyfriend. You Damn, tell where me, do you think she's going to want to go? Um, I, I'm, I'm, I might just make it easier and get a resort for her. Get a resort place for like the week or whatever. I'm like, yo, it's all paid for. Just fucking drive there. But she gets to pick where? Yeah. Where do you think she's going to pick? New York. No oh, shit. She wants to go hella bad. I told her I ain't flying this now. You had to wait till March. You go yeah. to New York for me. You can go now. I ain't going now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm about so. to hook my fucking kids up. They're about to shit their pants. Found a <laughs> PS5, which is hard as hell to get in California. Yeah, found a PS5. God damn. I was like, yo, I got this PS5. I, I, my homie's like, yeah, sell it to somebody. I'm like, oh, I'll ask somebody if they want it. And then you were talking about game like. I just know when I got your kids for fucking Christmas. <laughs> I, I got the girls like other like less shit and shit because you mainly Cam. Cam mainly going to be like, Yo, no. It's going to be me and him I battling. Know. So that's why more. I was like, I felt bad of going, hey, girls, this is yours too. <laughs> so it's like uh, the kids and then I got, we got the girls. So shit. sick. But they're going to be so hyped. The Madden, the basketball, the GTA, the fucking guys, let us know the best PS. What is the drop PS? it? Drop in the comments. Leave your five most fun games that yeah, an eight year you. old could play all the way up to our age. Yes. All right. Doom. Probably not. Probably <laughs> not. Elden Ring. Probably not for, for Cam. He's a sports kid. He's active as shit. He's a prisoner workout. He yep. does prisoner workouts in his room and he's a child. It's true. He's one of those guys. So leave us some shit like <laughs> play. FIFA, 2K, racing, 
Spider Man, Spider Man, Jumanji. Those Jum- are the ones yeah. we looked at. Yeah, Uncharted. Shit. I, I guess I could just tell you, hey, Uncharted's really tight. Okay, but you guys, you guys, are the gamers, <laughs> leave a little list in the comments, please. Leave a little list in the comments. That's gonna be some funny shit. If I video me and him playing, that's gonna be fucking hilarious. Me and him battling on two K. Oh show. yeah, dude. Oof. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, your kids are gonna be hype. What games you guys get? All those ones I just mentioned. Oh, we you bought them all. Of, well, we got like FIFA, Madden, NBA. I think we got GTA. We got a couple Ready controllers. Animal? Pretty oh. sure, yeah. Bro, Christmas Day is gonna be nuts. yeah. So you guys, oh, you're you're not a Mexican family. You do Christmas Day. Yeah, big yeah, time. Why do you even ask? <laughs> As so Christmas Eve what? is Mexican shit. Oh, I don't yeah. know why. Every Mexican family I ever met does Christmas Eve. Really? I've done Christmas Eve my entire existence. Yeah, no, it kicks off when you wake up. Fuck that <laughs> shit. My grandma would let us open like all presents on Christmas Eve. End of the morning, we had to oh, save one. Oh shit! We go hard on Christmas Eve. Damn. Oh, we used to go hard. That's why I'm like, that's why I want to buy my grandma's old house in Merced because it's it's a, you're allowed to build. Oh, this is my plan, real quick. My grandma Dolores. We went. That was Christmas. That's where you go. Oh no, we're one thirty. Anyway, I want to buy our house so I can uh, uh, build a nice house in the back. We can stay there. And then we're like, you guys ready to open presents? It's going oh, to Grandma's old house. Sick. And that's we walk in and be like, bro, show. this is Grandma's house from when we were kids. It's the same. No one lives in here in the year. Fuck that. It's our shit. Anyway, sorry. Done. Hour 30. Let's go. You did it. Hey. <laughs> that was the quickest story I ever told. Yeah. Grandma, <laughs> oh, my, get the house. Anyway, done. Let's go, guys. All right. PlayStation. Your kid's about to be hyped. Christmas Thank is about you, to sir. happen. About to be great. sick. About to crush this motherfucking year. Ooh, TED Talk. Me and Marty went over it right before we started. He, he's he's a he's a wordsmith. <laughs> 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 the first line I went. All right, now I got to change like 100 percent of what I had in my shit because that's a way better direction. So that's what we're doing, guys. Um, thank you so much, Marty. Anything else you want to say? Last episode of the year. Thank you. Of the thank year, you. not the season. Thank the community. I'm grateful. I'm fired up. I'm just happy to be here. I'm going to give it my all. The whole team is. That's it. It's about to, we're just getting started with this shit. Yes. And I'm on day five of waking up early and taking my vitamins every day. Let's go. Next year's about to be hard. Designing Sick. the day. Designing the day. That's what you told me. Design your day. Shout out to Rob Deerdick for that one. All right. Guys, this has been 2022. All right. 2022, we've been in this room the whole year. Last episode of the year. <coughs> Excuse me. This is right after Christmas, so we won't see you till after New Year. <coughs> oh, my God. <coughs> Please, everybody. Drive safe. The Uber charge might be a couple dollars more during New Year's. Don't drink and drive. All right? I have a lot of friends that have died in car crashes. A lot of them. Maybe a couple were, you know, intoxicated. They could still be here. So don't be one of the people that misses out on next year. You know what I'm saying? Be chill. Don't drink and drive. Call that Uber. That's why it's there. Get a taxi. Walk home or sleep on someone's couch. Don't drink and drive. It's Christmas time. Everybody's back in town. Wants to go hang out with their friends they haven't seen. See them next year by not drinking and driving also. That's the one thing you need to get across. Everybody's going to be hyped up, doing their thing. Don't be don't be stupid and dead. Or in jail. All right? I was looking for my fucking police sirens, but all I came up with was... Hey, yo! Don't be drinking. Don't be driving. Hey, yo, hey, yo! Yeah, that's the cops behind you getting pulled over. Hey, yo, hey, yo! So please be safe. Don't drink and drive. End of the year. Season two is coming to an end. Get, get Say bye to the room. We only got a couple more episodes in this room and it's over. It's weird. Brand new. The set's looking dope. Everything's going to look sick as hell. New everything. TED Talk. January 6th. All right. You might have saw our little ad response by us. Um, guys, thank you so much for everything. Thank you for... We told Marty before we stopped. Like, if we stopped doing weed shit, like we talked about earlier, if we stopped doing weed shit, we'd still have this following with our words and the podcast and the hangout and the vibe. So thank you. Like this stands on its own. This is our shit. I was telling Marty before we start, it's not the dope as Yola podcast. This is the dope as usual podcast. This is our shit. It's not, people don't come here and be like, yo, I want to just hear Thomas talk. Like motherfucker, it's us. We're having conversations. We're doing things. It's me and Marty. We're, it's different. All right. It's not just like 
I, I talk at the camera. Like, we're talking, we're doing shit. It's a vibe. It's, it's the garage conversation you have with your homies. That's what we're going for. And that's why we try to disarm every guest. Like, no, you, you can hang out here and just be yourself. So thank you for being yourself at home and letting us be ourselves and talk about the stupidest shit we've ever done and a lot of losses and a lot of cool wins. And I hope the wins make you guys stoked, like, for yourselves. When I see my, like I said, when we see other people crushing it, like, it makes me, like, good shit. I, I want to step it up. Not I need to catch up. I want to step it up. Not exactly. everybody's at everybody's level. Not everybody's, like, I'm not going to step it up and be a better editor. I could, I mean, if I dedicated years, but why, like, I know what I'm doing, my strengths. Like you said, what do you, what value do you bring to the table? Like, what do you bring to your table? And if you don't have a table, make your own fucking table like we did. And there we go. Wow. Oh, yeah, God that's damn. good. That was a good, that was good. Jesus Christ. I, know. I was like, oh, I gotta write that down. <laughs> that was good. Thank you guys so much for being here. From Marty O'Neill and I, thank you so much. This is the Dope As Usual podcast. Have a dope ass day. Oh! End of the year? Damn. Damn! I'm hyped now. What time is it?